Hey guys, let me know what you think by liking and commenting, and it really helps me and this channel out when you subscribe, so please click that button. Thanks a bunch! I've had the pleasure of dealing with Train World a couple times, and I really like giving them a call. It's kind of interesting. They have that sort of New York and Brooklyn accent, but the difference compared to where else I hear it is they're actually really nice. <laughs> they're nice people, and what they've sent me today made me really happy. It's the uh, new Bachman um, Long Range uh, Siemens Charger, the ALC42. And with the special paint scheme, the 50th anniversary paint scheme for Amtrak, really, really excited to put this on the track and really excited to show it to you and just put it through its paces a little bit. Um, it comes with TCS Wow Sound, yes, and uh, Keep Alive in it, which I think is wonderful, and I'll test that for you here to see how that works. Boy, um, for what everyone's been saying, um, this is just a really well-made and well-considered model. So let's uh, pull it out of here and see what it looks like. All right, you're seeing it the same time I am. It's uh, what well, it looks like. It's going to have a lot of cool features here. Emergency brake feature, really interesting. Um, I'll have to test that and see how that works. Um, have an emergency stop on mine, that's for sure. Um, <laughs> it has a dead man switch feature. That's kind of interesting. I don't know if I'm really going to try that or not. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to turn my hobby into more work, but I guess it, it might be worth a shot. If that's something you all want to see, um, maybe, maybe I'll do a video on that. Um, I know that this has really neat lighting features. Definitely want to see how that goes. Um, you know, what else? We're looking through here. Um, this all looks pretty standard, and we get to the fun page, which is the function page. Um, headlights, you know, um, ditch lights, bells. Looks like it's got... Everything you need here to have a realistic and fun time with this running on your layout. Um, I'm seeing here things that are pretty standard. It looks like it's going to have a sub menu, which I have to admit I don't like a whole lot, but it looks like they're going to have a lot of stuff, so there may be no way to get away from a sub menu, but that's okay. I usually just sort of set things up once and then I don't dig into the sub menus anymore. Um, so we'll kind of see what goes on here. Um, what else? Windshield wipe. There's a bunch of sounds, so I guess they're going to chew up um, all 28 of the functions. So I guess that's why there needs to be this, um, this sub-menu. So <laughs> we'll go into the. Looks like we're going to have a lot of sounds to play for you, so it's going to take a while to go through all those. So I, I promise I'll do that, and we'll see, we'll see how that works. So you, if, if you want to hear all of them, I'll do all of them. So um, I, I want you to hear all of them so that you can be excited if you're thinking about getting one of these. All right, we'll go ahead and get this out of the packaging. Yeah, I'm sort of typical, although I haven't seen one of these top snap ones, but that's okay. Um, we'll pull this out of here, and you can see right away what I'm seeing. Paint job looks excellent. Crisp, very clean lines. Looks like they made sure that this was going to be a quality item when they got it from the factory. And I've actually spoken to Amtrak about this, and I know that they have very high standards for the way that their company is portrayed in models. And it's obvious here that Bachman went through a lot of trouble to make sure that this was going to be a very, very nice model. You know, the paint, I can't, can't find any kind of flaws. You can see here with the light that, um, you know, everything's flush. It has these nice grills um, where you can view the walkway. And I know that lights up because I've seen photographs of it. Um, so um, there are no traction tires. Um, that's generally good. I, I generally like that. Really large speaker. Um, it looks like all of the details are applied from the factory, which I really like. Don't like having to sit there with parts bags. In fact, I usually just don't even bother to open them and just don't want to be troubled with it. So I think um, if you look here, the only thing it's missing is a driver. I like them when they're installed, but I know a lot of people don't. So I think they're going to err on the side of caution here. That's fine. I'll eventually open it up and put one in myself. So looks great. Everything looks wonderful. Just crisp, sharp, detailed. 
it's really going to look good in photographs when I have time to actually get my layout complete and get these things photographed. Looking forward to it a lot. Just as a side note, the Siemens Charger series is actually based on the European Vectron, which is also made by Siemens. I have uh, a Vectron right here. You can take a look at it. Of course, it looks different. The crash standards are different in the United States, and I think the styling uh, is different on purpose as well. All right, this isn't the heaviest locomotive I have in my fleet, but it's pretty hefty, and if I put it on the scale here, it actually tops out at over one pound. Uh, one pound and just over one ounces try it again make sure that I've got a good read on my scale sure enough comes out about the same it's just about half a kilogram and if you want uh, that's just about 17 ounces so there you have it pretty good locomotive there are no traction tires so it has to rely on adhesion for everything it does viewed dynamically it's just a really handsome locomotive I like the way it looks looks uh, kind of a cross between European and American which makes sense uh, I like the styling, I like the detail they've put into things like the wheels and the trucks. I like the fact that it has side mirrors. And what I really like is that you don't have to apply any of these separately. It's ready to roll right out of the box. All right, I'm going to go ahead and run through the sounds here for you. That'll start with track power on. Since I want you to hear the sounds more clearly, I'm going to go ahead and power this thing down and then go through the sounds. Attention please, now departing on track 1, northbound train number 110. Passengers are advised to proceed to track 1 at this time. Over. Now arriving on track 1, southbound train number 151. Please stand behind the yellow safety line as the train approaches the platform.
Only ticketed passengers will be allowed to board the train. Right, I'll just run it back and forth real quick and show you how the lights change per direction. All right, this is at speed step one out of 128. Just, it's not how I would set up my locomotives if I was putting in my own decoder. I'd like to make them run very slowly, but no problem. I don't have any complaints. I think it'll look fine um, from the distances I view these things. If I were using lock sound, I can get this to go really slow. Um, soundtracks, uh, they just seem to run fast and it's just sort of a pain to slow them down. So I'll take this. This seems like kind of the middle ground. Okay, let's put this onto my programming track, turn on the power, and whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, this happens with soundtracks decoders too. I use a Marklin Central Station 3 Plus, and when I power it on, it seems like soundtracks and now um, TCS interpret that power as DC, so it pumps um, full voltage into the motor and off it goes. The way I handle this is I turn off DC support, and once I do that, it never happens again. Then again, if you want to run this on DC, take it over to a buddy's house or your club or something like that, you need to re-enable that bit in CV29. I think that built-in capacitors and current keepers should be the norm in high-end models, so let's see how this one does. Even on my unpowered points, and even at low speeds, four seconds should be more than enough. I hope this meets your needs too. About 80% of the controllers that I run are lock sound, and part of the reason I like them is you can program them so that it won't start moving until the engine is spooled up or the engine reaches some sort of state that it should. Here, and just like soundtracks, you can actually start running it before the engine has really spooled up, and it's I don't like it. I like being able to program it so that it waits and that it makes more sense from, I guess, a perspective of realism. Let me show you what I mean real quick. The engine hasn't fully started up and you can run it all over the place. I, I just like lock sounds take better. I'll show you what I mean here by running my New Mexico Rail Runner Express, which I used a lock sound decoder in. And what I'll do is I'll turn on the engine and I'll immediately crank up the throttle all the way. And you'll see that it will actually wait for the startup sequence and for the engine to spool up. Part of all this makes me wonder if TCS and Soundtracks are sharing technology. They both start up when the power comes on, they both respond to the initial pulse of my Marklin controller the same way, and they both start running before the engine spools up. Really a complaint per se, but I wish there was a way to change a bit in a CV value somewhere that made this locomotive and my Soundtracks locomotive run more like my lock sound, where the engine has to be fully spooled up and powered before it'll start to move. Just like that added piece of realism, and I sort of long for it here. I do have a concept for this, but I'll wait a little bit and uh, I'll make a separate video with that. I just wanted to get this on the track, I wanted to test it myself, and I wanted to show you what I found. So I hope you enjoy. I'll let I'll let it run here a little bit and you can watch it. Take your time, take care, and uh, look forward to seeing you next time.